In the previous video, we answered the question, what mathematically has to be true for a mapping to be one-to-one? -one? And we found there's two requirements. The first is it has to be analytic. F of z has to be analytic, therefore satisfy the cauchy riemann equations. And secondly, f prime of z has to be non-zero. So critical points where it is equal to zero are points where it's not one-to-one. -one. So let's take a look at an example where we're gonna take two curves in the z-plane and determine their images in the W plane. And we'll check along the way whether the mapping is one to one. So here's the mapping. It's z plus one over z. So w is f of z is z plus one over z. So the two curves we're gonna take a look at and find the images of are r is equal to two. So that's a circle of radius two centered at the origin. And the second one will be theta is pi over four. Now that's a straight line that bisects the first and third quadrants. All right, so we're gonna take a look at the images of those two curves. So you notice in these problems, there's pieces of it where it's kind of plug and chug. You just do the same thing over and over again in each problem. And there's going to be pieces that are problem specific. And I'll clearly point those out as we go through the problem. The first part is plug and chug. I want to find the u and the v. So we've defined what w is, and I want to determine the u and the v, the real and imaginary parts of the mapping. Now the only choice I have to make is am I going to use z as x plus i y in Cartesian form, or z is r e to the i theta in polar form. In this case, we're dealing with r's and thetas already, so let's use the polar form. So w is z plus one over z, which is r e to the i theta plus one over r times e to the minus i theta. And then from the Euler formula, e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta, and e to the minus i theta is cosine theta minus i sine theta. So then the real part, which will be u, is r times cosine theta, plus one over r times cosine theta. Then the imaginary part is r times sine theta minus one over r times sine theta. So here's the u, which is the real part, and v, which is the imaginary part of w. Okay, so again, the parts plug and chug. We always wanna get the u's and the v's for our particular mapping. So now let's check if the mapping is one to one. So first we check whether it satisfies the cauchy riemann equations and is therefore analytic. And then secondly, we'll check uh, for critical points where f prime of z is equal to zero. So we want to evaluate the partial derivatives in the cauchy riemann equations, again using polar form here. So partial u, partial r. Well, u is this. So that's one. And one over r becomes minus one over r squared. Cosine theta just comes along for the ride. And then partial v partial r. So again, derivative of r is one, minus one over r is plus one over r squared, and sine just comes along for the ride. Then partial u partial theta. So derivative of cosine theta is minus sine theta. And partial v partial theta, derivative of sine is cosine. Okay, so now we can check our cauchy riemann equations. Here they are in polar coordinates. So does partial u partial r equal one over r times partial v partial theta. So does this equal one over r times this? And indeed it does. So the first equation is satisfied. Then the second equation, partial v partial r, that's this, is that equal to minus one over r times partial u partial theta, which is this? And indeed it does. So the second Kutcherman equation is also satisfied. So at every point, r theta, finite point in the complex plane, our mapping is analytic. So that's the first criteria for it to be one-to-one. -one. The second is to check for critical points. So critical points are where f prime of z is equal to zero. Now normally it's the easiest if you just go back to the original form of f prime of z, in this case, z plus one over z, take its derivative with respect to z, set it equal to zero, and just solve for z. That's usually the easiest way to identify any critical points. So f prime of z, derivative of z is just one, and one over z is minus one over z squared. Set that equal to zero, and then solve that, and you find that that's satisfied when z is plus or minus one. So there are two critical points, z is plus one and z is minus one. So that's plus one on the real axis and negative one on the negative real axis. So those two cr critical points are points where the mapping is not one-to-one. -one. At every other point in the complex plane, it's analytic and f prime of z is not equal to zero, 
so it's therefore one to one. The good thing is these two critical points, they are not on our circle that we're going to map, r is equal to two, nor is it on the theta's pi over four line that we're going to also determine the image of. So now that we know that the mapping is one to one for every point on these two curves, let's actually map the curves. So you go back here, here's our expressions for u and v. And I'm just gonna substitute in first for r is equal to two, we get this. So u is equal to five halves cosine theta and v is three halves sine theta. Again, just substituting in r is equal to two into the u and the v expressions. Now this part up until now is just plug and chug. But this part is gonna be problem specific because what I wanna do is I wanna eliminate the theta because theta is a vestige of the z-plane and we want everything to be in terms of the w-plane so only u's and v's, no r's and thetas. So I wanna get rid of the thetas and this is problem specific. So how do I do that? Well, one way to do that is I remember my trig identity that cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to one. So if I bring these fractions over to the left-hand sides, square these, add them, they have to be equal to one. So that gives me that the square of u over five halves plus the square of v over three halves is equal to one. Well, that's just the equation of an ellipse. So our circle of radius two in the z-plane has been mapped to an image curve, which is an ellipse in the w-plane. All right, so let's take a look at the straight line, theta is pi over four. So again, go back to the original expressions for u and v, substitute in theta is pi over four, so we have sine and cosine of pi over four, so that's one over root two and one over root two. And then again, up until now has been plug and chug, but from now on is problem specific. So I'm now looking to eliminate the r variable. Again, I want everything in terms of u's and v's, no r's or thetas. So what can I do to eliminate the r's? Well, you could try adding them. So let's add these two together. If I add them, bring the square root of two over to the left. I have root two times the quantity u plus v is equal to two r. Well, that doesn't quite eliminate the r, but let's try subtracting and see what we get. So again, bring the square root twos over and subtract, I have root two times u minus v is equal to two over r. Again, I, I still have an r, so I haven't eliminated it. However, I could solve this equation for r and substitute it in here for r and thereby eliminate it. If I do that, I have the quantity u plus v times the quantity u minus v is equal to two. So great, no r's, no thetas, exactly what we wanted. Now what does that represent? Well, if I multiply this out, that's u squared minus v squared is equal to two. That's the equation of a hyperbola. So our line, theta is pi over four in the z-plane has transformed into a hyperbola in the w-plane.